So a lot of people say, this is the first lever action Smith & Wesson has ever made. That is true. But it's not the first lever gun exactly from Smith & Wesson because the reason they have the 1854 name on it is because that's the year that Smith & Wesson patented the lever gun. I'm Ryan Gresham, and this, this is Gun Talk Nation. Hey, welcome into Gun Talk Nation. Today on Gun Talk Nation, you got me, Ryan Gresham, your host and uh, lone survivor of SHOT Show. So today on the show, we're going to talk about a lot of SHOT Show review stuff. So all the cool products we saw, maybe not all of them, but a lot of the products we saw that really jumped out and stood out. Um, and we'll talk about what it's like to be at SHOT Show. We'll talk about other things that happened there. Um, so we'll just kick it off. Um, welcome back. Happy New Year. We're, we're at it again. And if you're a gun enthusiast, hunting, shooting, all of a, all of the above, you probably have heard about SHOT Show. The electronics industry has CES, um, auto industry has their shows, and we've got SHOT Show. So the shooting, hunting, and outdoor trade show. So anyone who makes products or deals with the outdoor industry, hunting, um, shooting, they're at this show, right? So... It is not open to the public, and so if you're not in this world and, you know, you own a car wash or whatever, you probably can't go to the show. Although, there are a lot of people that attend because they have a buddy who has a gun store and you can get a badge, but probably NSSF will be mad at me for saying that, but NSSF is the one that puts it on, the National Shooting Sports Foundation. They're the trade association for the gun industry, and... They help with, you know, insurance and um, ongoing training and education. They also have gotten into the political side of things. They have political action committee. They have an office in, in Washington, D.C. now. They really, for a long time, they kind of stayed away from that. But they've gotten into that world as a necessity as we saw um, – problems and, and challenges with the NRA. And I think also they're able to do some things that other people can't because when you set up political action committees and, and stuff, stuff like that. So um, they're the ones that put it on, but just let me start off. And I've got a couple notes here because it's just, it's kind of wild how big SHOT Show is. This SHOT Show uh, record-breaking success 55,000 industry professionals, 55,000 people. And when I talk to people you know who I know just around town and they go oh you were out of town what were you doing and I tell them about SHOT Show and how big it is everyone's kind of shocked and surprised at the size of it it's one of the bigger shows bigger conventions that Las Vegas holds uh, 55,000 participants 13.9 miles of aisles think about that 13.9 miles of hour, uh, aisles, and it's a four-day show, so we get out there early. Um, this year, for a lot of the gun talkers, it was Saturday to Saturday, which is a long, long time in Vegas. Um, you got to pace yourself and hydrate, and uh, we lost a few good men, I'll tell you that. They were, they were down for the count, uh, taking all the vitamin C they could. But um, we get out there early because now it's not just a four-day show. They keep adding on to it. There was, there's the industry day at the range, which is the big range day that's kind of affiliated with SHOT Show. Hundreds of booths, thousands of people attending out at the range to try out all the products, which is very cool. It's packed, but it's cool. The day before that, now you have a lot of people doing their own range days. So um, myself, Chris Serino, Kevin Jarnigan, and Tom Gresham, we went to the Beretta Range Day, which is really the Beretta family of, of products. So you have Beretta, you have um, Burris Steiner, you have Norma Ammunition, you have Tika and Sako, which are also owned by the Berettas. And so you get to try out a lot of different guns. One of the cool parts is this was a little bit more hands-on. It was probably hundreds of people instead of thousands of people. And there were lots of different stations, like you could do a five stand and try out all the Breda shotguns. Um, there was a pistol 
bay or pistol section. There was a rifle section shooting stuff, I think all the way out to about a thousand yards. And then there was also a, a tactical shotgun section, which the tactical shotguns, I should have that in my notes. The Beretta's doing some great things. And then there was the premium side where you're shooting guns that are twenty and thirty thousand dollars. But they also have their pro staff there. One of their pro staff is Kim Rohde. Kim Rohde, five time Olympic medalist. I think maybe four of those are gold. Um, so she's there hanging out, giving us instruction on shotgun, which is kind of wild. You're sitting there like, yeah, I'll take your advice, Kim. Thanks. Um, so that was pretty neat. And, um, and then we went to the Smith & Wesson and had their own media event because they had a very big launch. And we'll talk about that in a minute when we get into all the cool products here. Um, did Smith & Wesson. Um, and then there's a bunch of you know meetings. We had Tom Gresham broadcasting the Gun Talk radio show. Uh, the one you just heard this Sunday was live from SHOT Show from the Smith & Wesson booth. Next Sunday... Live from SHOT Show, but not really live. Recorded at SHOT Show uh, from the Colt booth, Colt CZ booth, right? So lots of different guests. Probably when we got done, um, I called him Tom at the office, but Dad. Uh, my dad said, that was probably one of the best SHOT Show shows we've ever had. As far as guests and quality of content for the audience, just the radio show. It was just a great variety of people. It had a lot of... Uh, couple people from different companies on at the same time which is always cool especially when they're gun people they all know each other they all get along they're all buddies and so that's kind of cool to hear the back and forth and the you know the Caldwell guy going I love your stuff Smith & Wesson Smith & Wesson guy loving the Caldwell stuff and all the all those types of interactions we also of course if you've you may have seen it if you didn't Tune in and check it out. Gun Talks YouTube, Gun Talks Facebook, and make sure you're signed up for the newsletter. Um, we did 25 different live broadcasts from our booth at SHOT Show. We've got a, a premium spot right in the main hallway, right outside the main entrance of SHOT Show. And mainly KJ, I did a few, Chris Serino did a few, are interviewing all these different companies about their new products. We even talked to a brand new gun company. Um, Ross Martin, did I say that right? Ross Martin, um, Chris and Stephanie, they've got a lot of experience, uh, with Springfield Armory, but they started their own gun company, which is kind of interesting. So you'll probably want to hear, uh, the talk on that. So just look it up on any of, in our, any of our pages, but we'll be sending out those videos through the gun talk newsletter as well. One thing I want to start off with here is something really cool that happened kind of for my family. I mean, as some of you know, um, I'm third generation in doing this. My grandfather um, was big into the gun media world, Grits Gresham. And so uh, Grits, or Grand Grits as I called him when I was a kid growing up, he was honored with the NSSF Hall of Fame. He was put into the NSSF Hall of Fame. Um, so, I mean, he was a writer. He was a TV personality. He was, um, he was on um, Shooting S- Sports America. He was, he was on um, just all kinds of different shows out there and really helped bring the message of guns, hunting, and conservation to a mass audience because he was on ABC television back when there were only three television stations in the whole country. So you're getting like a third of the U.S. watching you at any, any uh, time. So he was honored with a Hall of Fame induction. But um, what did we see at SHOT Show? What was interesting? More than 2,600 companies had booths there. 821,000 square feet. And you had attendees from 117 countries in all 50 states. It's a giant show. And... Um, before I get into the coolest stuff, I'm just going to tell you, um, this Gun Talk Nation is brought to you by two, pe- two things, and they're, they're things that we're doing here. Range Ready, which is our training division. RangeReadyStudios.com is where you go to find out about classes and events we're putting on. We do pistol classes. We do rifle classes. We also do custom experiences. We'll do private classes. If you get a group of you and, and five friends, you can have your own custom experience, which is pretty cool. 
We could do force on force stuff in the shoot house, paintball, man on man, bad guy versus good guy. We also have a ladies only handgun class coming up in March, which there are a lot of women out there who want to learn more, become more comfortable, become more proficient. And this is an environment that I think there's more comfort level. We, we ran one last year. It sold out. It was very popular. The reviews were great on it. And it's a chance for a bunch of women to get together. Yep, Chris Serino is training it, but he, uh, he does a great job and, and gets you squared away. We also have the Taurus handgun experience coming up. So you're going to get to shoot. The guns are provided. The ammo is provided. The holster is provided. All you have to show up with is a good gun belt and a pulse. And we will help get you squared away. Bringing in some guest trainers, Caleb Giddings, who was on Top Shot with Chris, and now he works for Taurus, and a very accomplished shooter uh, in his own right, and kind of a student of it. He's always practicing. He's always practicing all of the aspects. He'll even show you how to run a revolver. He'll probably have one with him. He's he's a weirdo like, like that. But um, he's going to be coming in. He's also bringing in one of his favorite guest instructors. So check it out, rangeReadyStudios.com. The other thing that just quickly, we have a secret weapon and his name is Nick and Nick is a an industry buddy he's been in the industry for decades he is an armorer he is a competitive shooter and he has worked at gun companies and worked for other companies in the industry and we've put him on the case to go hunt down the deals and so we're kind of reviving our daily deals email. So if you go to gundealio.com, G-U-N-D-E-A-L-I-O.com, sign up for the emails. We send out a daily deals email and we get a great variety and we get great deals in there. And people are catching on. I'm getting feedback that people are taking advantage of these deals. So, um, you know, they're easy if, if they come through and you don't want it, you delete it. But um, we'll usually have six deals there and we pick out the best ones. It may be rifles, it may be pistols, it may be ammo, it may be some other gadget or piece of gear or optic or whatever. But uh, you ought to sign up for it because you're always kind of, we're always shopping, right? We're always in the market and we're able to get, find out about these things before others sometimes because like we have meetings with Palmetto State Armory or Primary Arms or uh, optics planet, right? We're talking to those folks. So, um, we'll give you a heads up so you can get the deal. So, um, new guns, new guns, new ammo, new optics. There were a whole lot of new cool things that we got to shoot and try out. Um, kicking it off. The first one I want to talk about was probably one of the most, the more talked about things at the show, Smith and Wesson model 1854 lever action. So a lot of people say, this is the first lever action Smith & Wesson has ever made. That is true. But it's not the first lever gun exactly from Smith & Wesson because the reason they have the 1854 name on it is because that's the year that Smith & Wesson patented the lever gun. Now, there's a whole story and history behind it that you could probably look up, and it's very cool. Some guy used to work for Smith and Mr. Wesson named... Henry. So I'll let you fill in the blanks on that. How did this all happen? Um, but the Smith and Wesson 1854 lever action, I mean, right off the bat, one of the cool things is it's chambered in 44 Magnum. And I had an interesting conversation with Jeff Hoffman from Black Hills Ammunition at the show. We were talking about this gun and we were talking about when you've got a longer barrel instead of like, you know, uh, a revolver, you've got this carbine, this lever gun length barrel. What does that do and what does it change for um, the, the performance? And this particular Smith is a 19 and a quarter inch stainless steel, steel barrel is, is the main model there. Now, they have the Honey Badger load. This is really cool. And Jeff is a student of ballistics. And he says, you know, the first time I shot a 44 Magnum Honey Badger into gel out of a carbine, I don't know if it was a 16 or 18, 19 inch gun. I looked at that gel and I thought, I've seen that before. And this is the coolest, most ballistic nerd thing you'll ever see. Jeff has three ring binders and color pictures of gel. And they inject this 
this dye into the gel so you can really see what it's done, the wound cavity, the penetration, all that stuff. And they look different. You can start recognizing the the gel. You go, oh, I, I can identify that's a pistol, that's a rifle. And then, Je- of course, Jeff knows a lot more than most of us. He said a 44 Magnum Honey Badger out of a rifle is almost exactly the same gel, penetration and damage and, and wound ch- cavity and all that stuff as a 308 180 Acubon, Nasra Acubon bullet, which is crazy. Center fire, higher velocity 308 versus what's basically a pistol round, a, a handgun round, revolver. So um, I th- you can do a lot of things with the 44 Magnum, and it's just it's a lot more fun to shoot uh, in a rifle than a revolver. I don't care who you are. That sucker kicks um, when you're shooting it with a revolver. They also have a limited edition one, and this is the, it's just called the Smith & Wesson Model 1854 Limited Edition Lever Action. This one is really high-end walnut, um, polished, just gorgeous, gorgeous gun. Now, the regular one is, I would call it more of a workhorse. It's it's uh, polymer furniture, the forend, the stock. It's stainless steel barrels, and it has a pick, pick rail on top. This is like a go to work right off the bat, or if you know, throw uh, an optic or or scope on it and go right to work. So, um, pretty cool. And I think that this is kind of like the year of the lever gun, because we also heard from Arrow and Stag, they have new lever guns. Theirs are ones. The Stag is a little bit more traditional. Um, the Arrow one is a little bit more tactical, and they're using some of those elements that, of course, they come from a an AR heritage. So some of the things you're going to see on there have those types of feature sets. So if you don't mind getting away from traditional lever guns, give those a look because they're very cool. Now, um, the one I shot was in 4570. I believe they also have one in 3030. So kind of your standard lever gun um, cartridges in there. Rossi has a lever gun. Um, there were some others out there. So lever guns, I think, are making a comeback. And I think there's a reason for that. Now, I know, being gun talk listeners, you guys are, you love a variety of guns, right? You own a variety of guns. But there's a lot of people who got into it, maybe from law enforcement, maybe from military, or maybe just movies or whatever, and they bought ARs, and they bought another AR, and they bought a tan one, and they bought a green one, and they bought a flat top one, and they bought one in 300 Blackout, and then they bought one in 6.5 Grendel, right? So, But it's all ARs. And then you've got the... Okay, I'm going to get a Glock 19. Okay, now I'm going to get a Glock 17. Now I'm going to get a, a Smith & Wesson MP, a 365. but they're all like these polymer, striker-fired pistols. And I think a lever gun, if you want to go analog, that is a really cool option. You have, it's kind of like a pump shotgun, right? You're actually running the gun. You're working the action. You're making it happen. And there's the sound, there's the tactile, there's there's just all these things going on that make it so fun to shoot. Also, the cool thing is these newer lever guns have a lot of newer features. So you've got a threaded barrel, which putting a suppressor on a lever gun is awesome. Um, You have different finishes you have different attachments it's easier to mount scopes on a lot of these so um just fun just fun to shoot so if you don't own a lever gun you probably need to go look at that lever action um one of the other guns that made a splash the show because it was it was a surprise to a lot of people is the taurus expedition it's a bolt gun a bolt action rifle from taurus now what do you need to know about it it's a uh, Remington 700 action. It is 308 wind mag, five round capacity, um, drilled and tapped. It is a little bit shorter package. It's an 18 inch barrel, almost kind of feels like a, a DMR gun, like one of those old law enforcement sniper type setups. But it only weighs 6.6. I'm sorry, I'm saying that wrong. It only weighs, why are they giving this in ounces? 112 ounces. Go do math. I don't know. It's like an eight pound gun. <laughs> I thought I had the stats for you. I'm sorry. But, um, you know, it's, it has a good look to it. It has some, some modern look to it as far as, um, 
the finish on the barrel, it's a hammer forged barrel that they kind of let be there. Um, the stock has a nice look and feel to it. Um, check it out. Interesting. I mean, some people are going to poo poo it because they're not known for doing bolt guns, but I think it's always worth looking at these things. Um, and it's something interesting to talk about. Another interesting one that I've known about for like freaking two or three years is Daniel Defense brought out a handgun. And it's the Daniel H9. Or I think it's Daniel H9, a DDH9, right? Um, so what does the backstory is, is some of you gun nerds, and when I say gun nerds, I'm saying that lovingly. I am one. I are one. They bought the patent or the rights to the Hudson. And Hudson was an interesting, very unique pistol that kind of came out a few years back and then went under, uh, went bankrupt. And they bought it and they bought, I want to say it was 21, 22 different patents along with this. Now, they've been developing it, customizing this to make it work for, like I said, two or three years. I think they ended up still maintaining using like two of the patents. So there's a lot of Daniel defense in this gun. They didn't just buy the gun and start making it. They really worked it through. Um, it's an interesting gun that you ought to go look at the Daniel H nine Daniel defense.com. Um, it's nine millimeter. It's kind of a combination of the pointability of a 1911, um, easy shooting and maintenance of a striker fired pistol. The big deal is the low bore axis, which is going to help reduce recoil, help reduce muzzle flip, faster follow-up shots. Um, and it really does, I haven't shot it yet, but looking at it in, in the booth and taking it apart and looking at the mechanism, it's, it's different. It's very different. So it's worth a look. Um, this would not be one that you already have in your safe or anything like it. It is a very unique gun. And uh, I'm interested to see how this does because... It's not going to fit anybody's holster. It's a it's a pl completely different footprint. And uh, we'll see what happens. Magazine capacity is 15. Could be a concealed carry gun, but it's not designed to be lightweight. I mean, this is a, uh, you know, it's a, let's see, product weight, 29 ounces empty. So not necessarily lightweight, but interesting. And, hey, you might want to buy one just for the gram because it makes you shoot flat. What else do we see at the show? Um, Umarex. Umarex always has interesting products. Um, they have, because it's it's air guns, right? I mean, for the most part, it's air gun based. Well, they have a new bow fishing gun. So it shoots arrows or bolts um, from an air powered gun. And it's like a little scuba tank on the bottom. Um, PCP, uh, PCP technology. So you're talking about like 3,000 foot pounds of it, of pressure. Actually, some of these are 4,000 foot pounds of pressure. So pretty cool. They also have some weird stuff. Double barrel arrow launching PCP power. The Air Saber Elite X2. Year of the Air Gun Hunter. I just love this stuff. There, every time we get to mess with the air gun side of things, it is a wild world it's like you're stepping into some like arnold schwarzenegger movie from the 90s um it's very cool so if you just want to geek out on some new stuff go check out umarex we we do use uh the t4e is actually an umarex company and that's what we use for first person defender and it's the replicas of real guns glocks mps walthers and they use co2 and they shoot paintballs and uh, could be a good training thing. I mean, you can, I believe you can buy them, but we use them for, for training for a uh, first person defender. One of the guns I, I kind of talked about um, going to the Beretta event. And one of the guns that we all agreed was really fun and we really enjoyed. It's kind of a new redesigned Tomcat. They're calling it the 30X Tomcat. Um, Beretta Tomcat is that small tip up barrel uh, Beretta. And tip-up barrel, meaning you can actually run this gun without having to run the slide, even though it's a semi-automatic. So you hit the switch, the barrel tips up, 
you can put a round in the chamber and then you can put a round or you can put the magazine in the gun and you start firing the gun and it's semi-auto. So for those who don't like running a slide, have weak hands, you know, a more elderly person perhaps or whatever has arthritis, this could be a good option. They also, the, the 30X is kind of neat because you can put a red dot on it. It's also threaded, so you can put a suppressor on it. And we kept going back to this. They also have a version that you can have a red dot and it's a compensated barrel. And this is a 32, so not a lot of recoil at all. Um, it's kind of it's kind of bonkers. So it's just a fun gun. I, I like the stuff that's a little bit interesting. I mean, obviously, you know, your your ARs and your polymer pistols, that's the bread and butter for this industry and, and, and for most shooters out there. But the fun stuff sometimes is the interesting different stuff. So this is kind of a throwback, uh, reintroduced, re-energized Breda 30X Tomcat. A couple other ones. Um, the Leupold Mark IV HD. I'll just tell you this about this. It's a full line of rifle scopes, and I heard from several different people, both at Leupold and other places, this is going to upset the apple cart in the world of scopes because it is feature-rich and sort of value-priced. Now, you're still talking about $1,000, depending on which model you get. could be 1000 could be up to like $1,600, but... When you look at apples to apples in the feature set, boy, these are these are a great value and a and just a great quality uh, scope. So, kind of cool. I mean, everything from a one to four power all the way up to wait for it, an eight to thirty two power rifle scope, not spotting scope, rifle scope. So you can really reach out and touch someone with that. Um, this would be a great option for you in those a little bit higher powers. Um, if you're wanting to get into that long range shooting, all the equipment is can be pretty expensive, but you can get something like a Ruger RPR, which that kind of did that it upset the apple card in the rifle world because it was like, dude, this shoots so great and it doesn't cost that much as, as others. And then you could put this Mark IV HD on it. It's pretty cool. So um, that's in the, in the world of optics, a really cool one. Another one in the world of optics is the new burris eliminator six now if you remember the burris eliminator this is the scope way before it's time you can range a target it would adjust the reticle in the scope and then you could make the hit and it worked it was big it was heavy it looked goofy on top of your gun the original now the eliminator six it just looks like a regular rifle scope and uh this one is a four to twenty power and so we used it at, at the Beretta Range Day. It worked great, and I like that the form and function, fit and form function, looks like a rifle scope. Um, it's going to work with your rings. It's going to work with your mounting system, most likely, and so that's kind of neat um, from Burris. A couple other things. Silencer Central has the Banish 30K. 30K. And in the world of suppressors, K usually denotes shorter. And when you put a 30 cal can, which that's where a lot of people start because you can run also your 5.56 through it. Um, when you put that on your 16 inch barrel AR, it's kind of goofy looking. I mean, it's five, six, seven, eight inches long. So it sticks out there. So I like the fact that they've brought out this K, uh, Banish, it's called the Banish Speed K. I, I'm sorry, uh, Banish Speed K. And, uh, I mean, we shot it with, it's only four inches long, uh, controlled flow technology, and I love this, industry standard hub. So you can mount it on a lot of different things. Um, it's a 5.56 five, suppressor, so don't listen to me when I said 30. It's a 5.56 five, suppressor. Um, but we ran it without ears on, without hearing protection, and it was fine. Didn't feel like, ooh. I don't know how much that's going to suppress. It really did work. So obviously Silencer Central makes it very easy to buy these suckers. So you want to go check that out and get your started really quickly. Walther has the new Hammerly Arms rifle. Just a lot of cool stuff at SHOT Show this year. And 
if you want to see or hear more coverage, be sure to tune into the Gun Talk podcast from SHOT Show. You'll hear Gun Talk Radio or watch some of our videos from it. Um, but that's just kind of our little debrief from SHOT Show. And uh, more and more coming. we got some new stuff that's not even released yet coming. And we have guns and other things here in the office. So you guys will check that out. But that's it for us. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time on Gun Talk Nation. To see all of Gun Talk's content, go to guntalk.com, guntalktv.com, or sign up for the Gun Talk newsletter.